Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to introduce Shona Clegg from the Virtual Biotech team of Parkinson's UK, uh, who will be speaking about one of the real life Im implementations of the Virtual Biotech concept. And with that, over to you, Shona. Hi, uh, I'm Shona Clegg. I'm a Clinical Studies Portfolio Manager at Parkinson's UK. I'm going to be sharing some slides with you. Um, uh, I'm delighted to be here today to talk to you about what we do in the Parkinson's Virtual Biotech to drive forward clinical trials for Parkinson's and to highlight the progress we're making through one project in particular, a partnership with a company called Neurolexus, which is developing a new drug for dyskinesia. Before we get into that, I thought I'd give you a little bit of background about myself and my previous career. I spent 14 years at the Dementia Research Centre working on research and trials involving Alzheimer's, frontotemporal dementia, Huntington's, progressive supranuclear palsy and Parkinson's. After that, I spent six years working for a commercial contract research organisation, a CRO, with a focus on neuroclinical trials. I joined Parkinson's UK in November 2021 and was particularly attracted to the role and the charity by the chance to be so much closer to directly making a difference to people with Parkinson's. I really enjoy seeing the wide range of potential therapies coming up and the opportunity to work with people with Parkinson's on making the clinical trials more user-friendly and so help to ensure their successful recruitment. My previous role was a lot more distanced from the people the trials were aiming to help, so it's great to be involved right at the early stages where input can be maximised. Okay, let's move on to talk about our work with Neurolixus to develop a new treatment for dyskinesia. So, first, let's look at why the charity is supporting research to address dyskinesia. Dyskinesia, as I'm sure many of you are aware, is a common and challenging side effect of current Parkinson's drugs. It is a very visible side effect, which is characterized by uncontrolled movements that can be extremely uncomfortable, tiring, and stigmatizing for people who experience them. Research shows that around half of all people with Parkinson's who take levodopa will develop dyskinesia within five years. And this raise, rises to something like 80% experiencing this after 10 years. So it really does impact a huge number of people. The best currently available treatment for dyskinesia is a drug called amantadine, which can be helpful, but also has its own challenging side effects, including hallucinations, dizziness and anxiety. So it's far from ideal. We know that patients themselves want better options for dealing and managing dyskinesia. In fact, controlled, uncontrolled movement was voted the third most important issue to be addressed by research in a 2014 priority setting exercise led by Parkinson's UK. NLX112 was previously discovered and developed by a French pharma company as a treatment for pain. After underwhelming results in phase two clinical trials, it was taken on by Neurolexus as they had identified an opportunity to repurpose the drug to treat levodopa-induced dyskinesia. NLX112 works by targeting brain cells that make and release serotonin, sometimes called the happiness chemical, because of the role it plays in modulating mood. In Parkinson's, scientists have discovered that serotonin cells can interfere with the regulation of dopamine, a brain chemical that plays a central role in the control of movement. People with Parkinson's struggle to make enough dopamine, they take medications like levodopa, which help their struggling dopamine cells to make more of this important chemical. And this helps improve systems, symptoms, especially movement problems. However, serotonin cells also get involved in using levodopa to make and release dopamine, but they do so in an erratic manner. This uncontrolled release of do dopamine leads to the distressing, uncontrollable movements we call dyskinesia. A drug that targets serotonin cells, therefore, could be the key to stopping dyskinesia. We began our partnership with Neurolixus back in 2018. They came to us for investment to help them make the final preparations to take NLX112 into clinical trials to investigate its potential effects on dyskinesia. This initial investment of £780,000 enabled the team to carry out vital late-stage research including drug formulation, preparation of clinical trial materials, and safety and efficacy testing in a marmoset model of Parkinson's. In this study, NLX112 was tested in marmosets with Parkinson's-like symptoms. The marmosets had developed the side effect of dyskinesia in response to levodopa treatment in a similar way to many people with Parkinson's. 
The study looked at the effect of NLX112 both on its own and in combination with levodopa to understand how it impacted both dyskinesia and Parkinson's symptoms. The results showed that NLX112 successfully reduced dyskinesia and, crucially, did not significantly and did not significantly reduce the effectiveness of levodopa, which many other similar drugs do. Interestingly, when NLX112 was used on its own without levodopa, it improved movement problems, suggesting that it may have a broader beneficial effects. Following this successful lab stage testing and preparations, in 2020, we joined forces with the Michael J. Fox Foundation for Parkinson's Research and Neuralixis to fund a £1.5 million, $2 million phase two clinical trial to investigate the effects of NLX112 in people with Parkinson's for the very first time. This study would be the first test of NLX112 in people with Parkinson's who experience moderate or severe dyskinesia. Crucially, the team at Neuralixis worked with Parkinson's in UK to involve people living with the condition in planning the trial. This led to the study being shortened to reduce the burden on participants and allowing people to continue taking amantadine for their dyskinesia to avoid putting people off taking part. The primary objective of the study was to evaluate the safety and tolerability of NLX112 compared with an inactive treatment, a placebo. The secondary objective was to evaluate the effectiveness of NLX112 for reducing dyskinesia. Other Parkinson's symptoms, including non-motor symptoms like pain and depression, have also been evaluated as NLX112 has shown potential for improving these symptoms in the lab. The trial was led by Professor Paul Svenigsen of the Karolinska Institute, Stockholm, and took place across several hospitals in Sweden. The trial aimed to recruit 24 participants who would be randomly split into two groups, 16 receiving NLX112 and eight receiving placebo for eight weeks. During the first four weeks of the study, participants took NLX112 at increasing doses of 0.25 to 2 mg per day to find the right individual dose for them. This was then followed by a two-week period of constant dosing using the optimum dosage for each participant, followed by another two weeks reducing the dose back down to zero. Clinical assessments for dyskinesia alongside motor and non-motor Parkinson's symptoms, including mood, sleep and pain, were carried out at the start of the study and after six weeks. Participants also completed diaries and wore a smartwatch device to help monitor symptoms throughout the study. This was a double blind study, which meant that neither the participants nor the researchers carrying out the study knew who received the drug and who received the placebo. In March this year, we were able to share some initial results from the trial, which look very encouraging. The, re the results achieved the first objective to suggest that NLX112 was safe and well tolerated in people with Parkinson's. The second aim of the study was to show that NLX112 was effective in treating dyskinesia. The results suggested participants who received NLX112 showed significant reduction in their scores for dyskinesia, whereas those who received the dummy drug did not show significant reduction in their scores. The side effects in participants who received NLX112 were mild, which confirmed previous results. So what's next? Adrian newman tricardi will be sharing more about the results from the clinical trial at the World Parkinson Contest Congress in July. We'll be sharing anything new from his presentation with the wider community via our usual channels, so do keep your eyes peeled for that. Assuming the fuller results continue to look promising for the next step for NLX112, is to go forward to be tested in larger, longer term studies to confirm the positive safety and tolerability findings and to further investigate its effects on dyskinesia. We're looking forward to supporting the Neuralixis team to make sure this can happen as quickly and efficiently as possible. Clinical trials are the most challenging and expensive part of bringing new therapies to people who need them. My job is really about trying to help the charity identify the best and most promising studies to invest in and then to work with the research teams to help them deliver these trials as smoothly as possible. I hope that we'll soon have more results to share from the other trials we're supporting with you. Thank you so much for joining this session and for your interest in our work. Thank you very much indeed. 
uh, I, I'm sure you have the uh, attention of a large number of people. Uh, you certainly have my attention. Uh, and uh, we will be uh, compiling a question and answer session later in the summer that brings all of these uh, the, the biotech presentations together in one in one show.